Понимаю? The, uh, the fact is, I, I wrote this book for the purpose of capturing history. That was the, the sole purpose, was to capture a moment in history so that my family, my friends would be able to understand something. But when the book was finished, the world had changed. The, uh, the publisher that I, that I published with the United States is not a major publisher. Um, and so I had no expectations that this book would uh, sell copies. It's a difficult topic. Uh, now, this book is not just about an American experience. It's about a Soviet experience. It's about the Russian experience. And so even though it was published in the English language, if I only left it in the English language, half of the people who were responsible for the story wouldn't be aware of it. This book had to be published in Russian. It had to be, because the Russian people need to understand this history, and understand uh, the moment, the magic that existed, and believe that can happen again. So I'm deeply grateful for Komsomolskaya Pravda for publishing this book, because it's a story that not only Americans need to be aware of, but Russians need to be aware of as well. <laughs> the United States today um, is infected with a disease called Russophobia. And it's a disease that is born of ignorance. And from that ignorance comes fear. And therefore, we are taught to be afraid of everything Russian. Be afraid of the language, be afraid of the culture, be afraid of the history. Uh, we're taught that Russia, this wonderful, vast nation of so many different and diverse people, exists only in one person, Vladimir Putin. And we're told that Vladimir Putin is the prince of evil. And therefore, all Russians obviously have to be evil because they support Vladimir Putin. When good people are afraid, sometimes they can do things that look ignorant, such as Russophobia. What I've been trying to do is to engage in a debate, a dialogue, a discussion about Russia, to bring facts on the table, to encourage people to understand the truth about Russia, uh, to, to have their minds open enough to understand that Russia is more than just one man. And it's amazing because the people that listen, that engage, they're no longer afraid because they're no longer ignorant. And they want to do this. There's a thirst, there's a desire to engage in this kind of discussion. But it's a very difficult struggle because while the people may want to participate in this, the government doesn't. The government wants to keep everybody afraid, keep everybody ignorant. And this goes back to your question, you know, am I afraid of what's going to happen? No, it's not my first rodeo, I've done this before. Um, but I know what's going to happen. I'm going to be attacked. I'm going to be attacked viciously because the government cannot stand what's happening here today. The government cannot stand me taking this back to the United States and using it as an antidote to Russophobia. Before I answer that, you need to understand that I'm an American citizen, not a member of the government. I'm sitting thousands of miles away from the actual battlefield, and I am a prisoner to the data that I, that's available to me. And none of it's secret. It's all data that everybody here has. I analyze the data using, drawing upon my experience as a military professional. But I don't pretend to have a crystal ball to be the perfect forecaster. So I just want to say that up front, that um, you need to take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. There's no way Russia should lose this war. Нет никаких предпосылок для того, чтобы Россия проиграла. I mean, it's, it's not a... I don't mean that... I don't mean that is, uh, is some sort of um, gung-ho-ness. First of all, war is horrible. I think we all have to understand that what we're talking about here is people killing people, but in this case, it's Russians killing Russians. All right, so this isn't something to cheer about, uh, because... This war should never have happened, but it's happened, and unfortunately, it has to come to an end, and I believe that
there's no reason for Russia to lose this war from a military standpoint. I think that the Russian government needs to make a decision on how they want this war to end. I don't know what that decision is going to be. So to me, the options are either win this war or have a stalemate. And a stalemate isn't a solution. A stalemate just means that this problem continues over and over and over again. Um, so I'm hoping that the Russian government decides to end this war by winning this war. And I'll say this, if Russia wants to win this war, there's no reason why this war wouldn't be over by the end of summer, early fall. I personally believe that Russia has put together a, the, the military potential to defeat Ukraine militarily by the end of this summer, early fall. Uh, the United States' uh, position as the global hegemon is collapsing. Um, will we be mature enough to understand that we are no longer sitting at the head of the table. We are going to be relegated to be like everybody else at the table, equals, instead of the superior. Um, that's a very difficult question because Americans aren't used to being equal. We're used to being number one. So that's tough. Two, will Russia and China put a place at the table for America? Because, frankly speaking, We've done a lot to anger you. You have a lot of reasons to be mad at us. And so it's not in your natural inclination to say, okay, we'll forget everything you've done, sit down at the table. But if you don't do that, then we get that bipolar world and we go back to Cold War conflict. So we need America to learn how to be equal, and we need Russia and China to have forgiveness. And then we can maybe get this multipolarity.